Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ, here to teach the truth. Who's the black man that went into slavery? Who's the black man scattered throughout the sub-Saharan slave trade, transatlantic slave trade, the diaspora, as the world calls it? We are the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Who is Christ? The black Messiah, according to Revelation chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. All these things we're going to prove to you. Your churches don't want to talk about it, but guess what? We're going to talk about it. Tune in every Sunday at 2 p.m. right here on your favorite radio station, WGAI AM 560. Hello, shalom, and good morning. Most high in Christ bless you all. It's Sunday, January 3rd, and uh, we're thanking you for joining us. This is Israel United in Christ, and we're live on WGAI 560 AM. Again, we are Israel United in Christ. If you want more information about our organization? Go to our website, www.israelunite.org. Again, that is www.israelunite.org. Our phone number, 1-855-484-4842 to reach out to us. That's, again, 1-855-484-4842. We are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group or black militia group. Israel United in Christ is a nonviolent, Bible-based movement. We do not advocate or condone any acts of violence against any race, ethnicity, or gender. We advise that if anyone hears or knows of any plots to cause harm to anyone or to break the laws of the land, you must contact the proper authorities to bring awareness to any possible threat, as stated in Leviticus chapter 5, verse 1 of the King James Bible. And again, shalom to you all. We thank you all for joining us. Today, uh, who's our host today? Captain Josiah. Captain Josiah. And also, who do we have in the studio? Officer Issachar. Officer Hezekiah. And myself, I'm Officer Ray Well. Uh, Captain, can you enlighten us on our topic today? Yes, sir. Today's topic is going to be the dietary law. Okay, the dietary law. Um, this is one of the uh, five categories of law that was given to Moses through the Most High. Okay, and uh, the Bible does explain what we are supposed to eat, what we're not supposed to eat. So that's what today's topic is going to be about. All right, so we ready? Give me um, John 8.32. We always like to start with John 8.32. Uh, this is a key component uh, to our lessons because this is based in truth, okay? Not about our feelings, what we think, uh, how we feel, and so forth. It's based on truth. Thus saith the Lord. Read what you got. This is the book of John, chapter 8 and verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Okay, read it again. John, chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Okay, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. That's what this lesson is about, is truth. Thus saith the Lord, all right? So now, dietary law. Let's go to chapter 1, verse Genesis chapter 1 and verse 29. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which let, is. Let's, let's say herb. Herb. Right. Go ahead, read it again. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, right? Which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you, it shall be for me. So this is in the beginning, okay? The Most High said, I've given every herb bearing seed, okay? In which uh, is the fruit of the tree yielding seed. To you, it shall be for me. So in the beginning, the Most High instituted a vegetarian or fruit diet, okay? For all males, females, animals alike upon the earth. Okay, read verse 30. Verse 30. And to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air. So this is talking about the animals. To every beast and every fowl. Go ahead. And to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so. So he gave the animals a vegetarian diet as well. All right. The animals did not eat each other in the beginning. Okay. Now get uh, Genesis chapter 7. Okay, verse 2. Genesis chapter 7 and verse 2. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, and 
the male and his female, and of the beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. Okay, so this is uh, the most I tell in Noah. This is when he's getting ready to bring the flood upon the earth. And he tells Noah, get the clean beast by sevens and get the unclean by two. So that means he had to take 14 of the clean animals and four of the unclean animals. So you got to ask yourself back then, how did he know what was clean and unclean? Okay, because the law was already established back then. Although, although they were not eating the animals, they understood, okay, this is clean, this is unclean. Read it again, verse 2. Genesis chapter 7 and verse 2. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. Okay, this is just establishing again that um, in terms of the topic that we're going to touch on today, the dietary law, okay, what, what are clean animals, what are unclean animals, it was already established from the beginning. Noah knew what these animals were, okay, even before Moses even walked the earth. Okay, now give me Genesis chapter 9, and we're going to read when a meat diet was established. Genesis 9 and verse 3. Genesis chapter 9 and verse 3. Now, this is after the uh, flood, after the flood came upon the earth. Okay, go ahead. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Every what? Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, mm -hmm. even as the green herb have I given you all things. You see that? It says, every moving thing that liveth shall be for meat, even as the green herb. So now, this is a complete diet now. Not only did he give them herbs in the beginning, now he's instituting meat right here, okay, to actually eat. Now it says, every moving thing, and that doesn't contradict what we just read already, because it was already established what was clean and unclean through Noah. Okay, that's why he had to take uh, take the clean animals by sevens, meaning 14, and then the unclean by, by twos, meaning four, because uh, um, a meat diet was going to be instituted. So you needed animals to not only eat, but also sacrifice down the line. All right, uh, Rio? Verse four, but flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. So now, although he instituted meat in our diet at this time, he says, the flesh thereof, read it again, verse four. Sorry, but, verse four. but flesh with the life thereof. That's the key. But the flesh with the life thereof, read. Which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. The flesh with the life, which is the blood, shall ye not eat. Okay. The blood of the animals, we are not supposed to eat that. So although meat was instituted, uh, the food needed to be fully cooked, okay? What do they call that thing now? Uh, rare. Rare, medium rare, so forth yeah. like that. Blood still gushing out. Most of says no. The blood, don't eat it. Read it again, four. Genesis chapter nine, verse four. But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. You see that? Shall ye not eat. Remember. The Most High gave us laws, statutes, and commandments, okay, to guide us throughout life. Laws, statutes, and commandments. This is a commandment. Shall you not eat? That's a commandment. Don't do it. All right? Give me um, Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 17 and verse 14. Now, we say this every week as we go through this lesson, okay, we need y'all to not only follow along with us, but... Uh, have your pens, papers, and notepads, and so forth. That way you can take notes and go back over this information later. All right? Leviticus chapter 17, verse 14. This is the book of Leviticus chapter 17, verse 14. Just giving you another precept to explain uh, the life and the blood. Read. For it is the life of all flesh. The blood of it is for the life thereof. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I said unto the children of Israel, ye uh -huh. shall... Unto the children of Israel. Therefore, I said unto the children of Israel, read, ye shall eat the blood of no matter of flesh. Do not eat the blood of no matter of flesh. We are not to eat the blood. Read it again from the top. For it is the life of all flesh. The blood of it is for the life thereof. Go ahead. Therefore, I said unto the children of Israel, 
Ye shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh. What? For the life of all flesh is the blood thereof. Whosoever eateth it shall be cut off. Okay, so that's a commandment of the Most High. So if you found yourself uh, eating, you know, rare, uh, medium rare and so forth, you have to begin to cook that meal a little bit more, get the blood out of it. Okay, thus saith the Lord. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 12. And give me verse 23. All right, this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 12 and verse 23. Only be sure that thou eat not the blood, for the blood is the life. And thou mayest not eat the life with the flesh. You can't eat the life with the flesh. Okay, so no, you can't have rare and medium rare. Do not eat the life with the flesh. Fully cooked again. Read again. This is Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 23. Only be sure that thou eat not the blood, for the blood is the life. And thou mayest not eat the life with the flesh. Okay, just to establish that point. So now, let's get into... Um, the actual animals and whatnot themselves. Uh, let's get Leviticus chapter 11 and let's start at 46 and 47. Yes, this is the book of Leviticus chapter 11, verse 46. This is the law of the beasts and of the fowl and of every living creature that moveth in the waters and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth to make a difference between the unclean and the clean. Read it one more time. To make a difference. I'll read it from the top, 46. Oh, Leviticus chapter 11, verse 46. This is the law of the beasts and of the fowl and of every living creature that moveth in the waters mm -hmm. and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth. So again, the topic today is dietary law. Dietary law. What did God institute for us to eat? What did he tell us we cannot eat? This is the law of the beast and of the fowl and of every living creature that moveth in the waters, go ahead. And every creature that creepeth upon the earth Come on. to make a difference. To make a what? To make a difference. To make a what? A difference uh -huh. between the unclean and the clean. So remember, we already established in the beginning that Noah knew what this was. Okay. This is just reconfirming what was already written. Or, well, let me say it like this. This was reconfirming what was passed down through oral tradition already, what Noah knew. OK, because this is when the children of Israel were having to relearn the law all over again. OK, because they were in captivity in Egypt. You know, to make a difference between the unclean and the clean and between the beast that may be eaten uh, 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 and between the beast that what that may be eaten, the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. So eaten. So the Most High gave us laws to distinguish between the two. And that's what we're going to get into today. And again, if you're just joining us, this is Israel United in Christ. We're live on WGAI 560 AM. This is a controversial topic. We're talking about the dietary law, what we should eat or what we should not eat. So if you have questions, please call in. The number to call in is 252-435-2554. Again, Feel free to call in with a question or a comment, 252-435-2554. All right. Give me um, Leviticus chapter 11, verse 3. This is the book of Leviticus chapter 11, verse 3. Whatsoever parteth the hoof and is cloverfooted and cheweth the cud. Well, well, give me verse 2 so we can get it in, in context. All right. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel. Unto who? Unto the children of Israel. Come on. Now, now, uh, in, in case you haven't been following along with us, uh, and this is your first time, uh, according to the Bible, the children of Israel today are the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Okay, and that's according to Bible prophecy. Uh, when you read Deuteronomy chapter 33, um, Deuteronomy chapter 28, uh, what else? Genesis chapter 49 and so forth. There's several different chapters uh, confirming who the children of Israel will be in the last days. So again, the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans are the biblical children of Israel. Read two of them. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are, all, that are on the earth. These are what? 
These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Come on. Whatsoever parteth the hoof and is cloven footed and cheweth the cud among the beasts, that shall ye eat. So it says, whatsoever parteth the hoof and is cloven footed and cheweth the cud among the beasts, that shall ye eat. Now, what is this talking about? And hoof is basically the foot of an animal. Like when you look at a, a cow, for example, okay, it has a hoof and it's cloven footed, meaning it's split in two. The split in the middle, that's what that's talking about, a cloven foot. Read it again. Whatsoever parted the hoof and is cloven footed and cheweth the cud. It says, and cheweth the cud. That's going into his uh, his dietary, what is it called? Um, uh, I'm trying to think of the term. Dietary. Uh, his Basically how he digests food. Okay, I'll say it like that. Right. So basically the animal will digestive, have... Digestive process. Thank you, that's it. His digestive system. So he has, uh, usually the animal may have two stomachs, and it's a certain way they filter the food throughout their stomach. Okay. Um, that's what it's going into. Chew with the cud. Read it again. Verse 3. Whatsoever parted the hoof and is cloven footed and chew with the cud among the beasts, that shall you eat. That shall you eat. So it's a basic criteria. The animal has to have a certain type of foot. He has to have a, a hoof, a parted hoof, and be cloven footed and chew the cud as well. Okay, like a cow, when they eat, they'll they'll store it in one stomach, bring it back up, chew it again, and it'll go into the second stomach. Okay, that's what chewing the cud is talking about. Um, it says, among the beasts, that shall ye eat. You know? Verse 4, nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud. Well, let's, let's skip that. We'll get to that, sec that second. I want to go over what we can eat right now. Read 3 again. Oh, verse 3, Leviticus chapter 11, verse 3. Whatsoever part of the hoof and is cloven footed, and cheweth the cud among the beasts, that shall ye eat. That's the key right there, okay? A parted hoof and cloven foot, and cheweth the cud, okay? And you have to do your research on these animals. The Bible's gonna list a few of them, okay? But you have to do your research. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse six. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse six. And every beast that parted the hoof and cleaveth the cleft into two claws. That's that's what cloven foot means. That cleaveth the cleft into two claws. Like I said, just like a cow's foot. Okay. Now we can't visibly show you the images, but you have to, you know, look it up on the internet for yourself or whatnot. Read it again. Verse six. And every beast that parted the hoof and cleaveth the cleft into two claws and cheweth the cud among the beasts, that ye shall eat that ye shall eat. So it's a basic, basic criteria. The number one thing that you could do is look at the animal's foot. That's the first thing you can do off top. So uh, if you just look at, think about some basic animals like a dog, you look at his foot, he has a paw. That's an animal that you cannot eat. Okay, but we're gonna get more into that. Um, uh, let's think about a deer, okay? A deer has the same type of foot as a cow. OK, or goat or lamb and so forth. OK, that's a basic criteria when you look at the animal's foot. Read 14 and 6 again. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 6. And every beast that parted the hoof and, cle and cleaveth the cleft into two claws and cheweth the cud among the beasts, that ye shall eat. And I, I just want to digress for a second out of the scriptures and give you all a, a little pointer. Um, the Most High created us from the beginning. He established, we read it earlier, he established a herb diet in the beginning, and then he gave us meat. And he instituted, through what we're reading now, what you can and cannot eat. We have basic things like cars, okay? If you have a gasoline car that you go buy, you're not going to put uh, diesel fuel in the fuel tank. You're not going to put oil. Um, if, if the car requires 5W30, you're not going to put uh, 10W30 and so forth and so on, okay? So the, the car comes with instruction manuals, what you can and cannot put in it, okay? So that car maintains the proper life. The most I gave us a diet, okay? Uh, the scripture says, choose ye life. That's one of the examples. Choose ye life or death. So he gave us life, okay, based on these laws. Give me 
uh, Leviticus chapter 11, verse 9. We're going to get now the animals that we just touched on were basically animals on land. OK, now we're going to get into the animals in the sea. Read in Leviticus 11, verse 9. Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 9. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever had fins and scales in the waters, in the seas and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. You see that? It's, it's a simple criteria. Read it one more time. Verse 9. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever had fins and scales. Fins and scales. Fins and scales, come on. In the waters, in the seas and in the rivers, them shall you eat. Them shall you eat. So you got to ask yourself, if I go fishing and I pull something out, I have to I have to check. Does it have fins and scales? If it does, okay, I can eat it. If it doesn't, it's an abomination. You can't eat that thing. Deuteronomy 14 verse 9. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse 9. These ye shall eat of all that are in the waters. All that have fins and scales shall ye eat. Read it again. Deuteronomy 14 and verse 9. These ye shall eat of all that are in the waters. All that have fins and scales shall ye eat. So let's think of some examples of fish that have fins and scales. You have trout, tuna, you have flounder. Uh, there's a, a great variety of fish you can eat. But let's think about what does not have fins and scales. That's your crabs. That's your shark, eel, squid, octopus. A lot of us may not eat octopus or squid because we, you know, we've been raised different. But the Bible is telling us to leave all those different, uh, how do you say, aquatic animals alone that don't have fins and scales. Oh, praises. Thank you, officer. So, yeah, think of an example. Okay, like you said, uh, you mentioned tuna, trout, uh, whiting, whiting, flounder, these different fish, fins and scales. Okay, fins and scales. Some of the things that we call delicacies, they're not. The most I says they're abominable. We're going to read that. Uh, give me Leviticus 11, verse uh, 21. Hey, Kev, I'd be remiss if I don't mention. Yes, sir. Shrimp. Right. Shrimp are not lawful animals to eat right and i know we as black and hispanic people we love shrimp but those are not lawful under god's laws right along with catfish right so that's right. another staple of the black and hispanic diet you eat catfish if you look at a catfish it does not have fins and scales right or it doesn't have uh, scales right and we're going to read that again here in a second all right so give me uh give me that right what you got leviticus chapter 11 and verse 21 watch this yet these may so, so we touched on uh basically the animals on land, okay, we touched on the animals in the sea. Now we're going to get into, um, uh, what do you call them, insects and so forth. Three, watch this. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 21. Yet these may ye eat of every flying, creeping thing. So it says flying, creeping thing. This is talking about insects, okay? These may ye eat. So there are some insects that the most High created that we can eat. Read again. Yet these may ye eat of every flying creeping thing that goeth upon all fours. That's the key. It must go upon all four. Read on. Which have legs above their feet. It has to have legs above its feet and walk upon all four. Okay. Read on. To leap with all upon the earth. And it leaps as well. Okay, it goes upon all four with legs above above his feet and it leaps as it moves. Okay, read on. Even these of them ye may eat. Now it's going to give an example. Watch this. The locust after his kind. Uh -huh. And the bald locust after his kind. Come on. And the beetle after his kind. And the grasshopper after his kind. So that's something we never heard before. The most I said that we can eat locusts, we can eat bald locusts, uh, beetles. And grasshoppers, those are lawful uh, insects upon the earth. Okay, read it again from uh, 21. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 21. Yet these may ye eat of every fly, uh, flying creeping thing that goeth upon all fours, which have legs upon their feet, to leap withal upon the earth. Even these of them ye may eat. 
the locust after his kind. The locust. Really? And the bald locust after his kind. The bald locust, you know? And the beetle after his kind. Come on. And the grasshopper after his kind. And the grasshopper after his kind. Okay. Give me uh, Deuteronomy 14. And uh, verse 11. Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse 11. Of all clean birds ye shall eat. You know? But these are they which shall not eat. Ye shall not eat. Well, let's stop there. It says, of all clean birds we shall eat. Of all clean birds. We'll get further down into that. Uh, unclean birds in a second. Okay. So basically what's going to happen is all the birds that the most high mentions here, those are abominable. The other ones we can eat. All right. So now let's get into, we touched on it primarily on some of the animals that we can't eat. We're going to read the scriptures. Leviticus 11 verse 4. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 4. So again, just follow along with us. Get your pens, papers, take notes, and follow along uh, as you can. Read. Leviticus 11, verse 4. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud or of them that divide the hook. As again? Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud or of them that divide the hook. Come on. As the camel because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the hook. You see that? So now, that's why we read earlier, it's, it has to be all three. Read, um, read verse three one more time. Leviticus 11, verse three. Whatsoever parted the hook. It says, whatsoever part of the hook. And is cloven-footed. And is cloven-footed. And cheweth the cud. And cheweth the cud. Read. Among the beasts. That shall ye eat. So it's it's all three of these in one, okay? Part of the hoof, cloven footed, and chew of the cut. It has to have all three. It's a it's a uh, prerequisite. Right, a prerequisite. Thank you for the word. So read verse four. Watch this. Verse four. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud, mm -hmm. or of them that divide the hoof. So it's some animals that chew the cud, and they divide the hoof. Read on. As the camel. As the camel. You know? Because he cheweth the cud. So he does have the correct digestive system. He does chew the cud. The camel does chew the cud. You know? But divideth not the hoof. But the camel does not divide the hoof. When you look at his foot, it's not a hoof. It's not that hard uh, foot like a calf. Okay? Although it, it is split, it's not hard like a calf. So a camel is an unclean animal. Read that verse 4 again. Verse 4. Nevertheless, these shall ye eat and not eat of them that chew the cud, really? or of them that divide the hook, mm -hmm. as the camel, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof. Really? He is unclean unto you. You see that? The camel is unclean. That's not an animal. Now, can you jump on him and ride and load him up? Yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Use the animal as the most high created, but he didn't create that for food. Read on. Verse 5. And the coney, because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the hook. Mm. He is unclean unto you. Come on. And the hare, because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the hook. These are these are like rabbits, okay? Coney and hare. When you look at a rabbit's foot, it's 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 like it's a paw, basically. They don't have a split foot like a calf's foot. So read uh six. Yeah, six again. And the hare, because he cheweth the cud. So but, he does chew the cud. Again, he has the correct digestive system. We don't. But divideth not the hook. Okay. He is unclean unto you. Right. So this animal does not meet the criteria as something you can eat. We don't. Verse seven. And the swine, though he divide the hook and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. He is unclean to you. So what animal is that that's unclean to you? The swine. Now, swine, that's a nickname for the pig. You also refer to it as pepperoni. Ham. Ham is still pork. You got a uh, pork loin. Bacon. Bacon. They give it a thousand names. Salami. They give it a thousand names, but it's still unlawful according to God. Read it again. Verse Leviticus chapter 11, verse 7. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. So when the, and the difference between the pig and the cow, the cow has different chambers in his stomach. The pig will swallow anything. If you've ever been to a hog farm, you'll see a, a pig de devour his own, uh, egg, uh, how do you say, excrement, to, to put it politely. And you are what you eat. 
read on. Yet he cheweth not the cud. Mm -hmm. He is unclean to you. So he doesn't follow the same uh, digestive process as a cow. God has decided that animal is unclean. Does he have a use? Yes. And, we'll, and Captain will touch on that later, I'm sure. Uh, all animals have a use. All animals are good, but not all animals are good for eating. And this one's important to note because this, uh, again, one of the staples of the black man and Hispanic man and Native American man's diet is pork. Uh, Captain, you mind grab a scripture? Sure, good. Uh, Jeremiah, about our heritage. And these things may be new to you all listening because we've been raised since slavery to have a horrible diet, an unlawful, sinful diet. We were introduced to pork uh, in the time of slavery, like the 1619. Our slave master was force feeding us the worst parts of the pig. And he made us to think of the delicacy. We were beaten into eating, consuming this animal. Read that. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse 4. Go ahead. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thy heritage. So when God says, you, he's speaking to the children of Israel. That's you blacks, Hispanics, you Native Americans. Your name is Israel. You are the Israelites, the Bible speaks of. And God said, you would leave your heritage, which is this Bible, which is these dietary laws we just read. Read. That I gave thee. God gave us the dietary laws. That's part of our heritage. Read. And I will cause thee to serve thy enemies in the land which thou knowest not. This prophecy was fulfilled in 1492, throughout 1619, when we were enslaved and forced into these pagan customs and pagan diets. Read. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. Because God was angry with us. Therefore, he took away our heritage. We should know automatically not to eat these foods. But because we discontinued from our heritage, we've forgotten we're supposed to check the uh, fish that come out of the ocean for scales. Right. We've forgotten to examine the animal, see if he chews the cud or how his foot looks. We don't even read labels now. But that's all I got on that, Kim. You got something hold on? No. So give me, um, read that again. Read seven. Seven. Um, Leviticus? Yeah. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 7. And the swine, though he divide the hook. And so be think about a, a, a pig. He does uh, divide the hoof right? and be cloven footed. So he has that hard foot that's split just like a calf. So when you look at his foot, you automatically think, oh, we can't eat that. But no, remember, it has to meet the criteria. It has to have a uh, divided hoof, cloven foot, and it has to chew the cud. Read it again. Seven. Verse seven. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. Yet he cheweth not the cud. His digestive system is not set up as an animal that we can eat. Read on. He is unclean to you. You see that? It's point blank, period. He is unclean to you. Read on. Of their flesh shall ye not eat. What did the Bible say? Of their flesh shall ye not eat. Of their flesh shall ye not eat. Of their flesh shall ye not eat. So no, there is no Christmas ham. Okay. Thanksgiving uh, ham and so forth. You roast honey ham. and No, right. the most I said, it is unclean to you. Read it again. Verse 8. Of their flesh shall ye not eat. Of their flesh shall ye not eat. Read. And their carcass shall ye not touch. Read. They are unclean to you. They are unclean to you. So these are just some basic animals we touched on. Okay, the camel, coney, the hare, okay, rabbits, pigs, and so forth. The most I says we cannot eat those things. Give me verse 13. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 13. And these are they which ye shall have in abomination among the fowls. Can we look that definition up real quick? Abomination. Read again. And these are they which ye shall have an abomination among the fowls. You know? They shall not be eaten. They shall what? They shall not be eaten. The fowl is talking about a bird. That's what fowl is. It's F-O-W-L. Fowl. That's a bird. Read on. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. The eagle. The what? The eagle. Read on. And the osprey. Read on. And the osprey. And the vulture. And the kite after his kind. So we're not going to go through every single animal for the sake of time today. But we're going to continue to read. Just We'll just read through some of them. And then you have to go through and do your own research. We're just giving you a basic understanding, thus saith the Lord. And again, if you guys have questions or comments, feel free to call us 
Uh, that number is 252-484-2554. Again, that number is 252. I'm sorry, 252-435-2554. My apologies. 252-435-2554 if you have questions or comments on today's class. Okay, we don't. Verse 15. Every raven after his kind and the owl and the night hawk and the cockle and the hawk after his kind and the little owl and the cormorant and the great owl we and the swan and the pelican and the gear eagle and the stork the haran after her kind okay so we'll stop there all right but like i said we just wanted to give you a basic understanding the bible lists a bunch of birds and fowls that we cannot eat notice chicken was not there okay Turkey and so forth. Those are not there. Those are clean birds that you can eat. Okay. Give me verse 10 real quick. Leviticus 11 and verse 10. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas. Now remember, Officer Ray Will mentioned this earlier about shrimp and uh, you mentioned shark, uh, eel, eel and fish. so forth. It said what again? And all that have not fins and scales in the seas. Everything that does not have fins and scales. Fins and scales. Go ahead. In the seas and in the rivers of all that move in the waters of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. So can we get that, that definition? Everything that does not have fins and scales, it says it shall be an abomination unto you. Right. The word abomination, the definition for abomination is a thing that causes disgust or hatred. A thing that what? That causes disgust. Or hatred. So you got to ask yourself, uh, when you go to Red Lobster and you eat your crab, you get your, what, you, what is it? All you can eat crab. All you can eat crab. The, the crab buffet. All you can eat shrimp. Too. All you can eat shrimp. Are you having these things in abomination like the Bible says? Read that verse again. Ver, uh, Leviticus chapter 11, verse 10. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers of all that move in the waters and of any living thing that is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. That's what the Bible says. The Mosai says anything in the waters that does not have fins and scales, don't eat it. It shall be an abomination unto you. And give me that one more time. What did abomination say? Abomination, a thing that causes disgust or hatred. Disgust. So you should look at a shrimp in disgust when it comes to eating it. You should look at lobster in disgust, clam in disgust. Right eel, and so forth. Anything that doesn't have fins and scales. So now we're going to shift to the New Testament. Okay. Real quick. Give me Matthew 5 and 17. Okay. Let's see what Christ said out of his own mouth concerning the topics that we just touched on, the animals and so forth. Did he come and change that? Okay. Did he make it where you can eat shrimp, crab, lobster, swine, eel, uh, camel, and so forth, rabbits, Read Matthew 5, 17. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. What did Christ say? Think not that I am come to destroy the law. Jesus the Christ said, don't think that I came to destroy what Moses wrote. I didn't come to destroy the law. You know? Or the prophets. Or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Christ came to fulfill and he fulfilled what was written of him. Can we read that real quick? Uh, that scripture where he said, he said that. Christ Luke said he did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Watch this. Luke chapter 24, verse 44. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which are written in the law of Moses and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. What did he say? Luke chapter 24, verse 44. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you. These are the words I spake unto you. This is Christ speaking. This is what I told you. Read. That all things must be fulfilled, mm -hmm. which are written in the law of Moses, uh -huh. and in the prophets, uh -huh. and in the Psalms, concerning me that's the key right there everything that had to be fulfilled concerning me concerning him so when the most i said um everything that does not have fins and scales in the water shall be an abomination that didn't have nothing to do with christ 
That didn't have anything to do with Christ. So you still have to keep the dietary law today. Now, we want to shift um, into uh, Acts 10 real quick. You want to hit that real quick? Yes, sir. We look at Acts. Let's go to chapter 10, verse. Go straight to 13. This is the book of Acts, chapter 10 and verse 13. So we're getting to the point. This is the apostle Peter seeing a vision. What Christianity has done, they have perverted this verse to say we can now eat whatever we want. Read that. Acts chapter 10, verse 13. And there came a voice to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. So they'll cherry pick that verse, some pastors, and say, see, through, through that vision, we can now eat any unlawful animal ever. Can you hold that and give me Malachi 3 and 8, 3 and 6? Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. It looks like, uh, apparently, after Christ uh, came and died on the cross, God changed his mind about everything. Is that true? Read. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6. Mm -hmm. For I am the Lord, I change not. What did God say? For I am the Lord, I change not. God said he has not changed. He said, I've never changed. We, uh, we don't. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Therefore, you Israelites are not destroyed. Now, let's go back. Because God had a promise to Israel to restore them and give them the kingdom in the last days. So let's see the meaning behind Acts chapter 10. We'll, we'll just be brief with it. Acts, Acts chapter, chapter 10, 10, verse 13. Start at verse 11. Verse 11. And saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending onto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. Now, they say that that sheet was covered with pork and steak and crabs. No, it's not. This is a parable. This is a similitude for the nation of Israel coming back together from the four corners of the earth. Read. Wherein were all manners of four-footed beasts of These the four earth. These four-footed beasts are talking about men. Read. And wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. Read. And there came a voice to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. And we're going to prove what we say using this same chapter. So the voice said, rise, Peter. This is Christ speaking. Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Read. But Peter said, not so, Lord. Now, wait a minute. Christ walked the earth and he taught the apostle Peter. Why would he reject that? Read. For I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. So Christ did not teach the apostle Peter to break the dietary law. He said, no, Lord, I, I can't do that. I've never eaten anything common, which means it's common to all men on earth. Because you, if you look around the, the earth, most people eat unlawful animals. Whether it's a Caucasian man or an Asian man or in Africa, they eat different kind of insects, bugs. They're eating things like a uh, bat, you know, coronavirus. They eat, eat bad and uh, wild boar. And, and today, the so-called black man, Hispanic man alike, has learned those things, too. Right. You know, now they, like I said, we, we take swan as a delicacy now. OK, shrimp, crab and so forth. We look at those as delicacy. You know. But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. He said, I've never eaten anything common or unclean. Where do you find about unclean animals? You read that in Leviticus chapter 11. Read on. And the voice spake unto him again the second time. What God had cleansed, thou shalt not call thou common. He called out, call not that thou call common. Not thou common. So it said, what I've cleansed don't call common. Let's see the whole meaning behind the parable. Give me verse 28. Verse we're 20. being brief. because you know, It could take a while to go through the whole thing. But here's the point of the vision of Peter. Read. Acts chapter 10, verse 28. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or to come unto one of another nation. Mm -hmm. So but he's talking about the northern kingdom of Israel. We had a family feud between the southern kingdom and northern kingdom of Israel where they could not speak to one another. Read. But God he has said, however, God but, said, but God has showed me that I should not call any man. Any who? Any man. Any animal? Any man. So the dream was about men. Read. Common or unclean. So the whole purpose of the vision was to show that there are no men among Israel that were common or unclean meaning reconcile the family back together, all 12 tribes of Israel. At no point in this chapter do you read about a pig picking or bacon or BLT. You don't read that anywhere in this chapter. 
It's talking about men. So just want to bring that up. Yes, sir. Thank you. Let's let's get verse 34 uh, real quick in the same chapter, just to further prove uh, that it was talking about men. Read. Acts chapter 10, verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Watch this. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Now watch the next verse and let's see who he's talking to. Read. For the word which God sent. Wait, 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 wait. Read 35 again. Verse 35. But in every nation, he that feareth him. Notice what it says right here. He that feareth him. He that feareth him. It's talking about men. It's, it's, this vision had nothing to do with animals per se. It was symbolic for men. He that doeth righteousness. Read on. But in every nation, he that feareth him, that feareth him read. and worketh righteousness Come on. is accepted of him. Come on. The, the word which God sent unto the children of Israel. You see that? The word that God sent unto the children of Israel. So again, the, like the officer mentioned, this was a feud between northern and southern kingdom of Israel. Okay? Because the southern kingdom had cut northern kingdom off. They looked at them as unclean and so forth. So this vision was about men again. Let's shift into uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. This is the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now, it says, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, the meaning in the last days, some shall depart from the faith and giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Read on. Verse 2, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Now, watch what it's going to explain what these doctrines of devils are as we read on. Watch this. Verse 3, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So one of the doctrines is they command you to abstain from meats which God had created to be received. It says what? Of them what? With thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Which them that believe and know the truth. Remember how we read the animals earlier. Uh, it had to be uh, cloven-footed and chew of the cud. Okay, what was the other thing? It was. It was. It said it, skills for water animals. No, no, just the, uh, the part of the hoof. Part that's part it. Hoof. That's it. Thank you. So it was part of the hoof and be cloven-footed and chew of the cud. So it had to have all three. This says that believe and know the truth. Give me the truth precept real quick. Okay. So to believe and know the truth, what is the truth? We we have hit the scripture a few times as we've been through these lessons. I want to hit the scripture again. What is the truth? Psalms chapter 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. What is the truth? Thy law is the truth. One more time. And thy law is the truth. Thy law is the truth. Thy law is the truth. So now, when you read verse 3 again, read that again. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So now, a particular doctrine would come out that you cannot eat the animals that God created for us to, to eat. And that says to them that believe and know the truth. Know what? The law. The law that we just read in Leviticus chapter 11, as well as Deuteronomy chapter 14. You have to know what God created for you to eat. Okay, read on. Verse 4, for every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. So that's a misused scripture in Christianity right there. So every creature of God is good. Now, all of a sudden, everything we read means nothing no more. So you can cherry pick just like Acts 10 is cherry picked to say uh, the vessel that came out of heaven. Now you can eat anything. Now it says every creature of God is good. They take that to say you can eat everything. No. Remember, verse three says to them that believe and know the truth. What is the truth? The law. 
God created certain animals for us to eat and certain animals for us not to eat. So, for example, I mentioned it earlier about uh, the camel. The Mosai created the camel and he said we cannot eat it. Although it did chew the cud because it has the right digestive system, but it does not part the hoof or be cloven footed. So we can't eat it. Now that animal is still good. It's good for what? For traveling, okay? Uh, what is it? Desert storms and so forth. You can travel with the animal. You can load heavy loads on it and so forth. It's good for that purpose. It's not good to eat. That's what this verse is talking about. Okay, read, read that verse again. Uh, First Timothy chapter four, and verse four. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Right, let's take the swine, for example. We read earlier that although it's it part of the hoof and be cloven footed, yet it cheweth not the cud. So we cannot eat the swine. But that animal is still good, what? For its purpose. Its purpose is a sanitation system upon the earth. The pig will eat anything. It cleans up the space that it inhabits, okay? Because it'll eat anything. You throw out your scraps, whatever you want, thrown out, trash or whatever, the, the pig will eat it. It's good for that purpose. It's not good to consume as diet, right. okay? Y'all want to touch that? Yeah, like a horse is good for riding, but who eats horse? Right. Read it again. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 4. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Right. So it was sanctified by the word of God and prayer. So uh, basically, like when you think about it, sometimes when, when you look at, at the Christian church, you know, when they look at that particular scripture, they think that, OK, a hey, thanksgiving. You know, Thanksgiving is one of the ones where it says uh, they say, you know, uh, our food has been blessed. It has been sanctified by God, by Thanksgiving. But God had said that the things that he had mentioned in Leviticus 11, those things are sanctified. Those things are for Thanksgiving, not your ham, you know, not your pork, none of those things. Uh, one of the things that I know Cap was talking about, uh, the abomination, right? You know what's an abomination? on top of things that's clean is when you go to like your Wendy's, when you go to your Burger Kings and you decide that you want to get a hamburger with bacon on top of it, there a BOT. Right. That, that is an abomination. That stuff, that's not sanctified. You're, 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 you're making something that's supposed to be clean, unclean. Right. By adding those things on top of it. They want to get it with double bacon. Exactly. Right. Exactly. All the praise. Read verse five again. First Timothy chapter four and verse five. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. You see that? For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. What was sanctified? Like the officer said, Leviticus chapter 11, he sanctified those animals. He said, you can eat it. Why? Because it parted the hoop, it's cloven footed, and it chewed the cut. Okay? What was the thing about um, the Catholic Church? Uh, oh, yeah, in yeah. In terms of those doctrines and whatnot that it mentioned. All right. In verse... Uh, Three, can you read three? First Timothy chapter four, verse three. Forbidding to marry. So most of the Latinos out in, in the world right now in the Catholic uh, religion, right? They they have the, the, the Pope, they have the what are the ladies? Sister nuns. Uh, the sisters, nuns. right? The nuns, nuns, right? And they're not allowed to marry. So God said in the last days there's gonna be a doctrine, a new religion on the earth that's gonna do that, right? Read. And commanding to abstain from meats, uh -huh. which God have created to be received with thanksgiving. So like the captain brought out, there's meats that in the Bible you're allowed to eat, like steak. But the Catholic Church pushes a doctrine that says you can't eat it on Fridays. So I know I was raised Catholic, so my mom would not let me eat steak on Fridays. She would tell me to eat fish. So again... These are an example. When you look into the earth, you can see who's teaching Christ and who's not teaching Christ. Right. All praise. Thank you. Go back to Matthew 5 real quick, 17. And we're going to read down a few verses. I think it's 19. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. Mm -hmm. I am not come to destroy 
but to fulfill. We read it earlier. Christ came to fulfill what was written of him. Okay, not to destroy the dietary law. We don't. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. So guess what? You can still look up and see heaven and you're standing upon earth. That means the law still stands. Read it again. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Read on. Whosoever, therefore, shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so. No, brother, you don't have to do that no more. Okay. Whosoever shall break one of these least commandments and teach men so. Okay. You break it and you teach men. You, you not only have to teach, you don't have to teach them by verbally saying it, but you teach them based on your actions. Mm -hmm. Just like the officer said earlier, you go to your Wendy's, your Hardy's, and so forth, you get a hamburger, which is clean and then you put the abomination on it like bacon, okay? You're teaching people to break God's commandments by doing those things. Read again. Verse 19. Whosoever, therefore, shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So it says, if you break the commandments and teach men, you shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Okay. That doesn't mean that you're going to be a doorkeeper. That means you're not going to make it. Exactly. Okay. The Most High is not allowing those that break his commandments into the kingdom. Give me that in Revelation real quick. Revelations chapter 21 and verse 27. And, and this is why we're going over this today, because we don't want to leave anybody behind. That's not the mission here. OK, we teach so you can apply the things thus saith the Lord. Read Revelation chapter 21, verse 27. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth. There shall what? That defileth. Read it from the top again. And there shall in no wise enter into it. There shall nothing enter into the kingdom. Read. Into it anything that defileth, Come on. neither whatsoever worketh abomination. You see that? Nothing that worketh abominations is going to enter into the kingdom. Just like we read earlier, uh, anything that doesn't have fins and scales, that's an abomination. Okay? The swan is an abomination and so forth. Right. And also, when Cap was touching on that in Leviticus 9, uh, I don't want y'all brothers and sisters to get misconstrued. The tuna, even though it has small scales, I mean, it looks like it don't have no scales. It does have scales. It has small scales. That's what it has. So it is lawful to eat tuna. All right? Just wanted to put that out there. Yes, sir. Thank you. Real quick, um, Acts chapter 5, verse 29, real fast, because these things are new to some of you listening, and you've heard doctrines contrary to what we've been bringing up. But let's see what God says. Who do we follow? Read. Acts chapter 5, verse 29. Mm -hmm. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. So there's our solution. That's why we've been going into the scriptures and seeing what God has to say about how we eat. We've been taught lies. So we have to go with what God says, not men. Thank you. Uh, give me Isaiah 66. So this is this Isaiah 66 is prophetic. Prophetic This is going to happen when Christ returns. For those of you that fail to keep the dietary law. For example, watch this. Isaiah chapter 66. Read verse you want 15 or 17. Read 15. Verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury. This, and, this is judgment. He's going to come with fire to render his anger with fury. Pay attention. Read. And his rebuke with flames of fire. His correction with flames of fire. He's coming with judgment. Read on. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plea with all flesh. Watch this. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. The slain of the Lord shall be many. You want to keep that in mind. Watch the next verse. Verse 17. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh, and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, said the Lord. Say it who? Said the Lord. Say it the Lord. There is judgment for continuing to eat abominable animals 
according to the Bible. Swine's flesh, swine's flesh, excuse me, and the abomination, mouse, and so forth. These are things that we cannot eat. So with that, we want to um, get our outro. All right. So thank you again for joining us. We are Israel United in Christ. If you want to reach out to us, our number is 1-855-484-4842. Again, that's 1-855-484-4842. Again, thank you for joining us today. Our topic was the dietary law. We pray you got something out of that today. Please uh, implement God's laws in your life. And with that, we say shalom. Most high in Christ bless you all. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision the tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.